Oh, this is uh, Red McNed. Welcome to the uh, to the saga. And uh, before we kick things off here, I want to say I did take out this big old piece of land here. And uh, with very careful precision, I have have to be careful about how I do this. I was able to sort of carve out a a sort of a natural. Uh, line around there to kind of start the bay. This might go a little bit deeper eventually, but that's not the main focus of this uh, this episode. Well, I've gone off into a undisclosed location, and I, try, I want to actually try to keep it a secret for uh, as long as I can. I can tell you this. It's in the middle of... Well, I guess I could call it the ocean. But I I want to basically... I I need to have a better place to put to do all of my things, and by that I mean like I storage. If you looked at the chests, and the it's starting to get kind of encumber or cumbersome having all those chests there in the middle of the town. And I eventually wanted to look nicer than just a uh, a dump off for my things. And also I want a place to be able to make the big efficient farms and stuff, since I'm going to start going to more uh, industrialized production mode with builds and stuff, and stuff. So, I'm making a place, I'm reserving a place, and it's out here, and it's over the water, where I'm going to secretly have a civilization that is super advanced, and it's going to be unknown to everybody else for now, but it's going to be basically my justification, my context for having really big farms. And the first thing, I, the reason I want to do this is because I need a mob farm. I realized that in order to do decorations and stuff, bone meal is going to be really useful. So, especially since I removed all the grass from the town. Uh, I guess, you know, I, but I, I had my reasons. I, I had my reasons. So, I mainly want to get a bunch of bone meal. But it'd be also nice to have all the other drops from mobs. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build that, but to maintain the secrecy of this place, I have here a few items, and I'll, I'll explain them. This is basically the, uh, the pieces for maps. And what's interesting about maps is that if you, build, if you make a map of a place, and you put it on the wall, and you're like, yeah, that's the map, but then you go build something. The wall map doesn't get updated until you take that map back to its location. So I do eventually have big plans to map out this whole map that I'm making. But on those maps, I want this to not be on it. So I can't wait until later. I actually have to make those maps now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sail around where I think this is going to be built. And I'm going to have maps at scales... Uh, probably two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths. Maybe one fourth also, but I don't know. Definitely not zero fourths. Because if if you didn't know, maps have that sort of scale system where you can beef them up by putting paper around an existing map, and we click it out of it. Not shift clicking. Shift clicking actually doesn't do anything. It's a weird bug, but that makes the bigger map and. I think the top three or four sizes, I'm going to map out the area first before I build anything. So that if like there's a town nearby, it's like, oh yeah, we have a map of the ocean. We know everything about the ocean. We're the smartest people. If it's not in the archives, it doesn't exist. You know, that sort of thing. I want the, everyone to be sure there's nothing in the ocean, but this to be a secret place in the ocean. So that's that's the goal of it. I want all the maps to be sort of incomplete. So I need to make those now. So I've got my maps. I would say, so this is pretty much the layout of where I am. Uh, I currently am around here where the tip of the arrow is. So what I want to do is this is all the level one of four maps. But I, and this, is, this covers enough space. But what I'm hoping is that the next level up will be just like all of these in one map. But to, so to do that, instead of going through the process of making a, I still want to keep the old ma the the smaller maps. So one of the ways to uh, um, do this more efficiently is to duplicate 
by just putting a new map, an empty map, and with the other map. So you can have one there, and one that turns into the next big thing, which would be, wait for it, wait for it, actually I shouldn't, I might not be able to show this because I might have, this might actually have some land features in it, but you get the idea. Oh, it won't. But as you can see, this is uh, this is now uh, level two, and I still get the other ones. That always looks really cool to me. Like if you go high enough up, I'm I'm at about two hundred right now. So that's why I'm making this first platform. If I look over the edge, I don't think I can even really see the bottom uh, where this hits the water. And up there, the, the very top where the torch is, that's 256 blocks. I couldn't put the I couldn't even put the torch off the block because it was like, oh, height limit, Mitch, you can't do that, or whatever. I can't do that, you know, something like that. And so, oh yeah, I did the maps before I made this, so this wouldn't be on the maps. This is the how much it took to get the full area for this. Uh, this is the maps at La. This is at two fourths scale, and this is three fourths, and this is four fourths. And at this one, you can start to really see the land nearby, and this one definitely. So I'm not going to show those, but rest assured, they're here. And I'm not going to open them here because once I do that, it'll update the map. So those will end up going somewhere far away safe, hopefully. But I have them. And if I ever to duplicate them, I totally can with the stuff that I showed you. So, on to the next part, and why I have a bunch of stone here. Probably not enough now that I... Oh, definitely. Definitely not enough. Well, I guess I'll... Uh, good thing I have a ladder <laughs> built onto this. And that boat is still down there. Because this is where the mob spawner is going to go. And I'm going to build the top of it at the block limit, way up there. And it's going to basically be um, the design by Monkey Farm. They actually, he made it quite a while ago, and it still works pretty good. By that, I mean like maybe a year and a half? Maybe two years? It hasn't been two years, has it? But it's his Mobs on Demand design, and it's like five levels up there. You push a button, or you can put it on a timer, and whenever that happens, a bunch of mobs fall out of it basically and he has a, a, a design that gets spiders too he uses water so no enderman but that's uh, that's what the end is for eventually having something is the moon really going through my oh I thought it <laughs> I thought the moon was going through the top there no it turn I just had to use a different block up there so it just it tricked me out it tricked me out big time but anyways I'm gonna I'm gonna crack on as they say and and work on that and I'll be back when it's done. The mob farm is underway and I even have a nice little portal so I don't have to uh, traverse the uh, journey to get here. I can't even really see the journey but it's down there somewhere but it doesn't have to be anymore because I have this. So but I, I did want to say a few things I did change up on the on yield monkey farm. This is my little base of operations here with infinity water source right there but one of the things I did differently with his design is he puts down the pressure plates and so did I but I I took them out afterwards just cuz you know I could reuse them on the other ones and the water keeps its shape especially if you do it right um, and for me I actually did it to where uh, he had the water source block start in the corner and then travel, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then stop. But I actually had it fall off on the seventh block. So it's all just this one block. So if I, if I took that away, all the water would go away. But I wanted to do that because I was getting kind of weird, glitchy water things on the sides trying to start a new stream. So this ended up being fine. And, you know, if you look at it, it goes in pretty good. The only reason it kind of gets funny here is because I didn't really finish that. But that's later. I also decided to power 
the pistons on the sides differently. Um, here, I, I can go up this thing and kind of show. <laughs> it took me three tries. Wait a minute. That's supposed to be open. So each of these should have open pistons on all of them, uh, which it looks like they do. And I decided... Actually, I'll go up to the top first. I decided to power everything from the top. So have it be one central source, and it's going to go to each one of these blocks, and there's going to be a clock mechanism up here. Now, uh, I did notice something building this, that since this is at the roof of the uh, world, you can place things here, but you can't place them here because at the top. And I didn't realize this, but light actually doesn't hit this block, which is going to be a problem because in order to keep this dark, I have to uh, do this because the light will leak through this hole up here and make the, the mob farm not work. But all this top's going to be dark, so I'm hoping that that doesn't make mobs. And I can't use half slabs on top of this either because the light will come through from the daylight or the torches on the roof. So if I, my advice would be to not build this all the way to where you have no room up here. Like, I'll give yourself a, you know, you never know, you know you never know. But anyways, here's a uh, quick view of how sloppy this thing started off with. Like, I didn't even use that, I don't know why it's still there. I made sure to light up the platforms with regular torches. But as I went, I think it got a little bit cleaner. Yeah, I started to streamline my efforts down, down one side. Have this three wide thing in the back to block any light going in just go all straight down and I think for at this point I pretty much streamlined it a lot better so I want to kind of do a quick walkthrough of how I did that since it is different from the original but the uh, first thing as I did is I made a little platform down there because I know I'm gonna fall actually I don't know I'm gonna fall I probably won't but I did fall once, and that was enough to make me not want to do it again. <laughs> so here's a basic concept right here is to, um, oh, blah, 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 okay. In order to power these, even though it's going to be surrounded with non-transparent blocks, I either have to power the block beside it or the block be behind beside it. And all of my strategy is to kind of hit these blocks from the side like this. So I'm going to get another view from down here. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to dress this up and make it so that each of these is going to have a ledge where the redstone can run right into the side of it and power the piston. You end up with something that looks like this. And this um, this keeps the light out of the areas where there's the pistons. And eventually these will all be filled in to be f pure walls or <laughs> pure walls, whatever. And I'll probably put a torch on each of those. I kind of wish I did up there, but I forgot. But this next part of the tower is going to be the uh, tower going down design and this or it's going to be the redstone carrying a redstone signal down design and it's going to go just a little ways over probably right in, like around here see now that it's nighttime you can see what I mean about the whole uh, block not getting any light on top so but anyways um, so the way that this thing works is it uses a tower that carries the redstone signal down and I can give you a better view of it from down there but see how the block how these red dots here here and here don't have power when it's switched when the power switch now those alternating blocks have alternating power so then you bring that back and it's back to normal this is the tower from a different angle 
And this is sort of the alternating style where there's a redstone on top of a block with a torch next to it. It powers this on a block, goes to there, powers that, yada, yada, yada. So what I want to do is wherever there is a redstone current being active, I want to bring that to, see, here how the piston just went off. I want to bring it to the pistons. So that's basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to find the least sloppiest way to do that. And that's kind of tough sometimes. But, you know, I I figure it out eventually. Some, you know, it, like that, that didn't really work. So uh, what I could do as you can see, this does try and do a lot of trial and error. Is make a bridge so that it powers that, then this can go under it. I'll just bank shot. There we go. <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm doing for the entire tower, is after those after this is built, and after this tower is built, I just try to connect active wires to um, to the spots that want them. And they always have to come in on the, in this direction. Like if I did it this way... Oh. Okay. <laughs> if I did it that way, it works. <laughs> Make me look like an idiot! Let's see, just like that, they're all uh, lit up, and just in case I'm worried, I can uh, throw more of these down. Oh, they don't really affect anything, except keeping things from spawning. So I did that for all of them, and then the top, I'll show you how I do the clock mechanism. I've come to terms with the fact that I can't build above these blocks, but what I did not expect was that I can do this but I I can't actually do <laughs> do put any delays on this even though it's not above the blocks I can place it but I can't actually um, interact with it so I didn't expect that I guess I'll have to do my uh, my clock somewhere else alright I figured it out so I have this nice little track that sort of winds around the outside of of this a nice big square and on that track on each side there's about 20 repeaters that are all set full so four ticks their uh, their maximum range so that makes it about eight seconds for each of these straightaways and since there's four of them that's 32 seconds of delay and I think that's I think that's gonna be enough I had a bunch of repeaters apparently left over after I took them out of the clock tower. So this wasn't really as much work as it looks like, although I did make a few more. But I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is to let the water get triggered for uh, 12 seconds. So 12 second long pulse. And then that'll just kind of keep traveling around here ad nauseum, ad finium, ad infinium. <laughs> and this thing will just, you know, do its thing. So the next step is to figure out what eight, what 12 seconds would look like. One of these straightaways here is actually two seconds. So if uh, the reds, if I put this torch down here and I watch the pulse go from here to here, once it gets to there, that's four seconds. Once it gets to the end of that, it's eight. So once it gets all the way over there, that's about 12. So then I'll break it once it gets over there. So that's the goal. And these repeaters are only going to go one way because they're all facing the same direction. So let's see. Hopefully I can see it from here. Yep, I'm going to break it now. Okay. That should be a 12 second <laughs> pulse that's going to go around 
And every 32 seconds, it should snake its way around. Like I just saw it finish over there. Oh, yep, it's coming around this side. And... Oh no, I forgot to put the redstone down. As it comes around this time, I'm replacing the redstone so that all should be well. And once I take away this uh, redstone thing here, this is going to be the new power source for all of these pistons. I realized I just did the inverse of what I wanted to do. I didn't want it flowing right now. So a good way to fix that is to redo this uh, setting up the current again. But this time when it goes around, oh, I made that just in time, make sure that I have the opposite number of redstones remaining. So basically, what I mean by that is once I see the signal go over there, I'm cutting it off here. So there's like this anti-pulse of 12 seconds. So hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense. So that's going to go. There it is. Okay. I think that, I think that did it. So we have this anti-pulse. <laughs> and that's when the water will flow. The water will flow for 12 seconds. Roughly. Ah, oh, poop. Poopy. So the wire is not flowing while the signal's on it. But there should be 12 seconds, roughly, when the wire does flow. And that'll be enough time for it to clear everything off of the platform down there. Just to control things, I uh, put these barriers here just to see if it's actually working. And looks like uh, looks like they are. They're doing their thing, so once I remove these and get out of here, it's pretty much gonna start making mobs. And also the good thing about this is all the torches are on the platforms. So once I take out these blocks here that don't need to be here, the torches are gonna be swept away and it's just gonna be fallen time for everything. So actually, come to think of it, I better have something for them to fall on. Big moments happening in here, so I'm I'm tactfully removing ta <laughs> tactfully good one. I'm tactically removing the blocks as I go down the uh, the old stairways, these crossbeam things, and making sure that I don't get swept out. But you can kind of see this thing in action with the. Uh, while I do this, it's gonna be really nice. Just go. Whoop! Luckily, this thing kind of caught everything. I have a, uh, a little setup down here of a uh, three by three thing for stuff to fall down. All these hoppers connect together and run into this chest. So hopefully that catches stuff. And I have a pretty good area in here with my looting, my lo 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 looting sword. In a good angle, so that I can I can kill I can kill them all. I've been standing around for quite a little while and at different distances, and I'm kind of confused because there's literally nothing spawning. Like it doesn't matter where I stand, and I'm. Really hoping that I didn't do something really stupid, like have all the half slabs on the on the wrong type of half slab. Uh, I don't. I did that right, so I'm not really sure what's what's up actually, um, or if like height actually is limiting mob spawns. So I'm gonna have to look into this and just make sure I didn't like make us completely useless structure. I I really hope. It's not, <laughs> that's not the case. I don't know, it seems like a long shot, but I'll try it. So there, there is um, someone on the forums that's trying to claim that uh, 
that if you change the chunk render distance, it'll actually uh, there might be a bug. So I'll I'll try it, but I, I don't know what to expect. Like usually my view just gets all messed up. That's that's about it. So I don't. Know. I, don't know. I have it set on six chunks because of lags. Uh, I know. Like it. Wait, does it? Oh, I still have a lot of la Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. This this is did this actually work? Uh looks <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh wow, okay. Oh wow, we're in, oh okay. <laughs> Alright, we're getting quite a uh, cluster here. <laughs> Maybe I should start killing them. Uh Wow, okay. Um this is this is working really well. <laughs> like, um <laughs> maybe Wow. Uh all right. All right, kudos. Uh I guess I have to find that name and thank them. Actually, that also means that I don't know. Does this work as an off switch too? If I if I change the render, because I didn't I didn't put an off switch on this thing. Uh, we'll see. I also made this so that I can. Uh, Walk around. If I crouch, I can actually see. Um, like this is at head level. If I crouch, I can see almost everything, and nothing can make eye contact with me. So I could just, you know, snoop around the outside. And safety first. Gotta make sure you have a railing. Also, if you're curious, um, the. The floor of that spawner building thing is at about Y37, like where the water ultimately dumps them off. And if I was standing on these, it'd be at 216. And that seems to be a pretty good height. Like, I wonder. Alright, that's <laughs> two hits with the, the helmet. One hit. Alright, that seems to be a pretty good height, actually, I'd... I'm pretty happy with. And the mobs have definitely slowed down considerably. Yeah, I just texted my entity counter, and it went down to um, two. I think it might be at one. So this is after like a minute. Uh, maybe more than a minute. But <laughs> like, I was worried about bone meal. I guess we're good with that. I guess we're good with a lot of things. I am so happy. I'm so happy that this wasn't just a waste of time. I was going to be really, like, I was going to say, well, no video this week because morale just sank into the toilet. <laughs> so I'm happy to say that there is a working uh, mob farm. This is going to help out a lot. I'm so happy this works. <laughs> and I was worried. It took me, like, I don't know, about three hours of browsing around and to try to find that random solution. So the person from the forum goes by the name The Master Caver. It's all one, no spaces, and the front of each is capitalized. Sir or madam, if <laughs> you never know, you never know. You were my lord and savior for this. <laughs> like, you deus ex machina this right into existing, so... Or working at least, so thank you sincerely. Now I have a now I have a working uh, mob farm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you for watching. This is a much more elated and really relieved Red McNed over here. Happy to uh, have this working. <laughs>
Uh, it's something I don't have to worry about. And uh, it's going to propel me into the future. So, I think the next episode is either going to be putting more things out here, because I really, this is just the beginning of industrializing this place. Um, and, or, eh, or, do more work in the village. One of those two. Anyways, have a good day and be the best you that you can be always.